Out of all the amusement parks that I've had a chance to visit, Dollywood in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee stands out as one of the absolute best. This park has beautiful scenery, fantastic employees, and plenty of unique stores and restaurants. However, the main draw to visit Dollywood, at least for me, is their great collection of roller coasters. As of today, the park currently has nine coasters operating, and I've had the opportunity to ride nearly all of them. So, I wanted to take a closer look at this park's roller coasters, and rank them from worst to best, in my opinion. With that being said, here's my ranking of every roller coaster at Dollywood. Number 9, Whistlepunk Chaser. Remember when I said I had ridden nearly every coaster at Dollywood? Yeah, this is the one exception, and I hope that's understandable. It's a pretty standard kiddie coaster, which means it's good for what it is, but compared to the much larger rides on this list, it just doesn't stack up. As per usual with these rankings, just because it's in last place doesn't make it a bad ride, but I doubt it would have been placed any higher even if I did ride it. Number 8, Blazing Fury. I feel a bit bad about placing this one so low, considering its historical significance to the park, but it just didn't really do it for me. Blazing Fury is one of Dollywood's first roller coasters, and is a near clone of Silver Dollar City's Fire in the Hole, which is considered to be the first indoor coaster. As for the ride itself, I have some mixed thoughts. The first half is pretty cool and definitely has its charm, but in the end it's more of a dark ride than a coaster. And that's good for what it is, but it's hard to put it much higher when ranking this list of roller coasters. But the second half is really what this ride is known for. Out of nowhere you plunge down this crazy drop, which throws you up out of your seat. It isn't incredibly tall, obviously, but it catches you off guard considering the ride never seemed to be going up in the first place. Right when you think that was it, the ride goes straight into another drop, which leads into the show scene that had such a loud popping noise it actually made me lose hearing in my right ear for about a minute. Oh, yeah! Looking back, the drops were pretty fun, but considering they're out of nowhere, I didn't really prep my body for them, which led me to get it banged around a bit. For a while, I had this as my least favorite coaster, but now I have a little more appreciation for it after thinking about it again for this list. It's still not a ride I'd prioritize when visiting the park, but I'd still recommend it if you have the time. Number 7, Dragonflyer. The newest expansion to Dollywood, Wildwood Grove, is one of the most charming kids areas I've ever seen, even in its half-completed state. While we wait for that new launch coaster though, let's talk about the roller coaster Wildwood Grove does have, the Vacoma Suspended Family Coaster, Dragonflyer. Now, I know Vacoma and Suspended is a bit scary to hear in the same sentence, but these Suspended Family Coasters are surprisingly great, and probably my favorite type of low-thrill family coaster out right now. The other one I've been on is Freedom Flyer at Fun Spot Orlando, and while that one is good, this one is miles better. The highlight is the first turnaround after the drop, which tilts you at a surprising angle. Although the rest of the ride never reaches those heights, it's still surprisingly forceful for what's supposed to be a family coaster. And unlike the infamous SLCs, this one is pretty smooth too. If you have the chance, I'd totally recommend checking this one out. Number 6, Wild Eagle. This ride is… fine. It's just okay. I probably have this ride much lower on this list than others would have it, but I was pretty let down by the first and only B&M wing coaster I've been on. The concept itself is pretty cool, if not quite as cool as the 4D coasters like X2 at Magic Mountain, but I didn't think it added a ton to the experience. And with the lackluster layout, especially after the corkscrew, this ride doesn't really do anything for me. The first few inversions are cool, but nothing special compared to the other B&Ms I've been on. And like I said, after that corkscrew, this ride just completely dies. It goes through a hill with pretty much no airtime and two pointless helixes before arriving on the final brake run. The restraints were really uncomfortable too, digging into my shoulders from the very start of the ride. For how menacing this coaster looks towering over the park, and remaining mostly hidden within the mountains, it makes it even more disappointing that the ride is just alright. Number 5, Fire Chaser Express. Okay look, I know this ride probably shouldn't be above Wild Eagle even if it is a pretty disappointing coaster, but let me try to explain myself. Yes, this is a family coaster, and even if Wild Eagle doesn't pull a lot of forces, I doubt this ride pulls much of anything at all. But there are a few things I really enjoy about this ride that put it above Wild Eagle for me. First are the launches, which aren't that fast or powerful, but still surprisingly fun. Second are the small bunny hills, which actually have some airtime. Of course, being a family coaster, the airtime isn't very strong, but Wild Eagle, in comparison, offers basically none. Third is the theming. This ride is in a beautifully landscaped area, and the touches of theming all around really add a lot. I love the show scene halfway through, which leads to the reverse launch, which in itself is a pretty fun moment as well. Along the course, there's even some near-miss elements that add even more to the ride experience. Overall, I think this is a great ride, and just so happens to be one that anyone can enjoy. Number 4, Mystery Mine. What a bizarre coaster. This is a Gerslauer Eurofighter with a ton of unique elements, including two vertical lifts. 
I'm not a huge fan of vertical lifts, but these are less uncomfortable than some of the other ones, so it wasn't a big deal breaker. Before going into the first lift, this ride actually has a fair amount of theming, which really makes it stand out. This is probably the best themed coaster in the park, and honestly rivals some of Disney's offerings, until you go outside. The first outdoor section isn't anything to write home about, minus the fact that it actually got changed recently and the old track still sits there to this day. It's weird, but kinda cool. Where this ride really excels is after the second lift hill, where it goes into this absolutely crazy set of inversions. The ride rolls once, then twice, leaving you hanging up there for a second before slamming you into the final brake run. That element alone makes this entire ride worth it, but the theming and pure uniqueness of it adds a lot to the experience, and makes it one of the standout rides in the park. Number 3, Tennessee Tornado. This ride is the definition of short but sweet. Honestly, it might be a bit too short. This ride is pretty much the first drop, the Immelman, a loop, and another Immelman. Luckily, all of those elements are both forceful and fun, which is to be expected from an old era looping coaster. There's some other cool features to this ride too, like the first drop diving into a tunnel and the theming as you approach the queue. If the layout was fleshed out a bit more, this ride might have placed even higher, but it's definitely fun for what it is. Not much more to say, honestly. Just a solid ride all around. Number 2, Thunderhead. This was the biggest surprise on my trip last year. I'd never even heard of this ride before visiting Dollywood, and after getting off, it became one of my all-time favorite wooden coasters. It is a little rough at times, although it seems like there was some track work done for the 2022 season, but it's never enough to take away from the fast-paced insane nature of this ride. It's hard to even break this ride down into individual elements, as all the twists, turns, and hills seem to collide into one big experience. Although, one standout is the crazy station flyby about halfway through. If it weren't for how great the next coaster on this list is, this would have easily taken the number one spot. Apart from the slight roughness, this is nearly a perfect ride. Number one, Lightning Rod. Yeah, it wasn't going to be anything else. Even though I didn't get the opportunity to go on this ride when it was running at its peak, this ride experience is still amazing. There are some minor disappointments, like how the hill after the first drop gives little to no airtime, but everything after that first drop is fantastic. Every moment of airtime on this thing is insane, with sustained ejector airtime on each and every element. The launch is awesome, and incredibly unique for a hybrid coaster. And of course, that quad down tearing through the hill is one of the most fun elements on any coaster ever. With its secluded wooded setting, its fantastic layout, and one-of-a-kind elements, it's no wonder why Lightning Rod is regarded as one of the best. Well, that's about everything. If you liked this video and want to see more Parks Coasters ranked, be sure to like and subscribe to help out the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.